Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. In this Ruby snack, I'm going to start a new mini course called Deploy to Digital Ocean. In part one, we will create a droplet and install Ruby from source. So let's go over exactly what this mini course covers. We're going to deploy a Rails app using DigitalOcean VPS, an Ubuntu 14.04 image with Apache and Passenger, Then we're going to use Capistrano to deploy staging and production environments. Other tidbits you'll learn along the way is how to install Ruby from source, how to use a .profile file to export environmental variables, how to install unattended updates in ImageMagick, how to do your DNS configuration, and of course some troubleshooting tips, because deploying to a production server is always full of surprises. In this episode, we're going to go over creating that droplet on DigitalOcean, setting up a deploy user, installing unattended upgrades for security updates, install Ruby from source, and then install Bundler. If you'd like to code along, you'll just need a DigitalOcean account created. You can feel free to use my referral code to get a $10 credit when you sign up. And the link is right there. Yep, that's it for today. We're just working with the production server. Alrighty, let's get started with step one, create a droplet. So a droplet is what DigitalOcean calls their virtual private server or VPS because they have a water theme going on. They call it a droplet. Speaking of themes, we're going to enter a host name, Battlestar Galactica, per viewer request. Shout out to Neil for that one. And then we'll select a size. The smallest for $5 a month for 512 megabytes is all we need to play around and test this out. Select a region, New York, or whatever is closest to you. Then select an image. We're going to select Ubuntu 14.04 by 64 or the latest long-term support release. You can choose a newer version of Ubuntu. You just need to know you'll need to update that a little more frequently. Then we'll add the SSH keys. Now, if you already have one in the terminal, it's easy enough to print that out and then copy and paste it into DigitalOcean. If not, I recommend this tutorial from GitHub on how to generate your SSH key. Let's hop on over to DigitalOcean and get this started. So we'll create a new droplet. And let's go ahead and put in that host name of Battlestar Galactica. And then change that default from 10 to 5. And scroll on down. New York is already selected, but select the one that's nearest to you. We'll go ahead and scroll down to select the image. And as you can see, you can pick newer ones, but I'm going to stick with the 14.04. And then scroll on down. I just leave those blank. I don't need any of those. And I already have my SSH key installed. So I'll just select that and create the droplet. Now this takes a little bit of time. So I'm going to speed this up. This usually takes between one and two minutes to finish up. So now it's finishing and refreshing. And here is our droplet. Let's take a little tour. So you can see that you have console access right from here in case something is happening with your terminal and you need to come directly to the DigitalOcean website. You can also power off your droplet from here. That's in a a, dire case scenario. Power cycling is a little bit better, but also not as great as doing it from the command line. Now here we have something that's very important, our IP address. We're going to be using that all over the place. So go ahead and copy that because step two is going to use that IP address right away. We're going to SSH in as root at IP address because that's the only thing that's created so far when you create the droplet. It's a good idea to create a deploy user to deploy your web app just in case you're going to use your server for other uses. You'll want to have different users for each use. Then you'll enter a new password. Be sure to write it down. We will be using that often. Then you can enter a name and then blank for the other options. They're not crucial. Then we'll enter Y that the info is correct. And then of course we will add deploy to the sudo group so that deploy has all of the privileges of a sudo user on the server, which means a lot. Then we will exit the server because we're done with root. And now we will copy the SSH to the deploy user so that we can easily SSH into our server. Opening up our terminal, let's go ahead and SSH 
into the root at IP address. That will, of course, be different for you. And we will say, yes, we trust that IP address. And then it's added as a known host. And here we are. Great, so now we'll add the user deploy. And we'll enter a new password. Whatever it is, just write it down. You'll have to put it in twice. And then, oops, I guess I didn't put it in correctly. Be sure to put it again correctly. So I will try again. Enter that password and then enter it again. All right, I got it this time. So let's go ahead and put in our name. Since it's Battlestar Galactica, I will use Starbuck. Ace Pilot, information correct? Yes. Great, now let's paste in the next command, which will be adding deploy to the sudo group. And that's done, now let's exit, we're done with root. So now let's go ahead and add that SSH to the deploy. And here's where we enter that password that we just put in. That's the last time you have to put it in when you SSH into the server. Let's go ahead and test it, it says to, so we will copy that and paste it right into there to make sure that everything is working, and it is. We're in without a password. Next up is step three, install unattended upgrades. Now, unattended upgrades is a really simple program that makes sure that your server is always up to date with any security updates. I like to put this in just for peace of mind because you don't always want to upgrade all of your packages all at once. We've already SSH'd into the server. Now let's go ahead and update those package lists with sudo apt-get update. This we need to do anyway as we are about to install a couple of programs. Unattended upgrades is probably already in there, but let's go ahead and run this command just in case. And then we need to enable the program. And you'll see there's a quick screen to deal with as well. Now note, when you want to upgrade the non-security upgrades, you just need to run these two commands. I suggest doing this at a time when you think very few people are on your site because it may involve rebooting the whole server. In our terminal, we will run sudo app get update and of course we have to put in our password and there it goes and the next step is to just make sure we have unattended upgrades in there and it's actually already there let's go ahead and activate it pasting in that command and you'll see this screen so we'll just need to use the tab to yes and then enter you'll see it created that config file so it's all set up Step four, installing Ruby is actually the most time intensive portion of the work on the server. So first we need to install dependencies. Then to manage our installation, we're gonna make a temp folder just called Ruby. We'll go into that directory and then download the version that we want on the server and it should match what's set in your Rails gem file. So I'll be installing Ruby 2.2.1, but of course use whatever version is best for you. Next, we'll decompress the downloaded file, move into that directory, run the configure script, run the make utility, run the install command, and then check the installation. Finally, we remove that temp folder. I ran through that quickly, but you'll see it does take some time. So first, let's paste in all of the dependencies. And if it's been a while, it'll ask you for your password again. So put that in if it's been a minute. And yes, I would like to add all of that. And so I've sped this up a little bit. It takes a little bit of time. Next up, we will make that new directory just for now. Move into the directory. And now let's download the file that we need. All right, and then go ahead and extract it. Great, and next we go into that Ruby folder, whatever the number is for you. Now configure, sped this up again for you real quick. And now make, make takes the longest time. Hey, go take a break, play a game, smoke a cigar, have a coffee, whatever, have fun. And then come back to see that your command has finally finished. And so then we will sudo make install. It takes a little bit less time, but I sped it up as well. All right, now let's check. Let's see that Ruby is installed, and it is, hooray. So now we just need to remove that temp folder 
and we're done. Let's CD back to home since we are currently in a removed folder. We're up to our final step for today, which will be to install Bundler. So we're simply going to make sure that RubyGems does not install all of the documentation and take up space on our server. Then we'll install Bundler. Bundler will help us when it's time to deploy our app. Hopping back to our terminal, let's run the command not to install the documentation. And now we will install Bundler. And it says, oh, there's a problem. Oh, I forgot the sudo. It's important to include that when you install things. So let's go ahead and add sudo gem install bundler. And this time it works. That's it for this episode. Here are a few links to resources I used when creating the episode. If you'd like more free Ruby snacks, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can click on that big red button right there. And if you are not already on my mailing list, head on over to rubythursday.com by clicking on the Ruby and sign up. Let me know if you have any questions or encounter any issues. Deploying to a server can be a bit tricky, so I'm happy to help in any way I can. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.